Hey guys, it's me Lucas, welcome back to my channel. Recently, I made a filter for Instagram and I've been getting so many questions on what I used to make it, how did I make it, and all that good stuff. So I thought I'm going to compile it into one video. Don't treat this video as something like really educational or whatever because I'm probably not the best person to be telling you how to do things because I guess my way of doing things is a bit abstract. Like, I didn't really follow tutorials, so a lot of the stuff I'm doing I probably could be doing an easier way but I'm not. So, also it's a lot easier than you'd think to make a filter. So I'll be showing you how to make this filter and there'll be a surprise at the end of the video. So keep on watching. And I do have a little surprise at the end to know how to add 3D objects similar to something like this. So as you can see here, I have a skin smoothing, a skin distorting to make my face more like slim, I guess you could say and to add little like overlays like this and then that iconic shine. So to make the filter you will need the program Spark AR. It's a free program and it's really easy to download and quite easy to use. Uh, you'll also need an Instagram and a Facebook account and then you'll also need this resizer file so we can make our face more slim or thick or we can really change it up if that's something that you want to do. So this is what Spark AR looks like if you have successfully downloaded it. Here there's a few quick tutorials and you can also start straight off the bat with some starter files that they use which you can edit to your liking. Um, so we're just going to start fresh. I'm going to click this create project button. So if you want to make little face decals like makeup or tattoos on the face, you'll need to download some reference assets. So to get those, go here, click help and then get the face reference assets. So the first thing we're going to do, which is relatively easy, is we're going to make our face more smooth. So to do that, you just right click here, click insert and then click face tracker. So inside face tracker, you want to right click and insert a face mesh. As you'll see, this is kind of creepy. So to get the smoothing effect, click the materials plus icon and it will automatically create a material and just click here, then go to the material and select the shader type to retouching. Now you guys can play with this, obviously you can set it to 100%, you can set it to zero which will do nothing, you can even set it to like any number, so 500%. Obviously it's not really what we want, it's a bit weird, a bit creepy, but if that's the effect that you want to achieve, you do you. So I'm setting the retouching to 40%, so as you can see that was really easy. I'm going to right click and rename this material to smoothing because that's what I did and it's good to have that organization and I'm also going to rename this as well to smoothing. So now we've got the smoothing and there has been a bit of a issue with this in like the community I guess you could say and that's the same thing with the face slimming or distorting and pretty much I do agree with the statement. People do say that it is like false advertising and that you are creating a image or a reality that isn't your image or reality. But with filters really all you are doing is creating a ideal aesthetic and I feel like when someone is wearing a filter you know that there's been a bit of retouching or slimming involved with it and that's kind of the whole package. So the next step I'm going to make my face more slim and take down some features to make my face or the viewer's face more like ideal. So to achieve this slimming effect I am going to download a package. It's a fairly decent package. It really does everything. Um, but that will be one of the links in my description. So look for that and download that and when you click the deformation plus It will just guide you to your computer library and your storage and just click that package. It's fairly easy So this is a file that you should click. It's a .fbx file and when you open that you will have the deformation. So the deformation may take a while to load and as you can already see this eye is pretty big and Automatically that's just set to one and I'll show you what this does So the more you go up the more it will change your features and you can really mess around with it And you can also go into the negatives and make this eye smaller and Just look at the titles here and it will correlate to the type of effect that it is So obviously you can go really crazy with this and just you know do some crazy stuff So I've already kind of done the maths for this and I have kind of found the formula that I like to use when it comes to filter making So I'll just type that in and yeah so I've just changed the formula to my liking and as you can see, so I've done the distortion and the slimming and now I can turn them off and on. So as you can see here, it's quite a big difference and I wanted to go for a more stylized look. By the way, in the description there will be this whole file so you guys can use that if you want to, um, it's your choice. So now I'm going to get to the little tattoos I guess you could say or the face overlays. So if you saw before I had club here and then I had a little exclamation mark tattoo here. Before I do that I do need to rename this to warp or like slimming or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to go back here to insert 
and I'm going to click the face mesh. Same thing's gonna happen, this is like a good sign. Anyway, so we've done that, which is great, and we are going to make a new material. So we're gonna click here and go create new material, and now we are going to rename this to, I'm just gonna rename it to tattoos, and I'm gonna also rename this default material to tattoo. I'm in the material now, and I'm going to change this to face paint, which is like what you use if you wanna create makeup or tattoos, or such. Now we need to use our reference assets that we downloaded before, so I'm going to get into those and I'm going to import them into Photoshop. Now you don't need to use Photoshop, you can use any other free online tool. So as you can see on my screen I have this base face and that's what we're going to use to make sure that the lettering and the tattoos and all that is in the right place. So while Photoshop loads, I just wanted to give a massive thank you to everyone that has been using my filter. I really appreciate the support, and if you haven't used my filter already, uh, do so, tag me, and I may repost it on my stories. So, so the base face is loaded, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some text. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm not going to go into it too much, and I'm using the Baskerville font, and I'm just going to type in club, all in caps. Obviously, you can do your own design, or you can take inspiration from other people's tattoos. Now, when you're setting the color, um, make sure that it's not pure black, because no tattoos or just nothing is ever pure black. So I've set it a bit up, so here's pure black, and I'm just going a bit up here. Now I've got a Command T, and I'm going to scale this down a bit. So now I'm just positioning it where I like, and obviously you're probably not going to get this right on the first time. Now I'm just going to draw a really basic exclamation mark. So now I need to save my file. Before I do that, I need to uncheck this background. So it's just these on a transparent background. And I need to go file, save as, and save it as a PNG. So after you've saved your face overlay, click the tattoo material and click choose file. And then source out your file. So here we go. I do have it here. So right now it just looks like it's like on my skin it doesn't really look like it's embedded in my skin per se so I'm just gonna lower the opacity a bit until it looks nice so right now I'm gonna add a really cool aesthetically pleasing glow to this filter and to do that you right click on the face tracker you click insert and you click face mesh now I am going to make a new material and I'm gonna click create new material so I'm gonna rename these both to glow it's just for simplicity's sake it really helps in the long run so now I'm going to go to my material and I'm going to go and click physically based. So now we want to open up the surface parameters and we want to set the metallic to 100%. To get a really cool glow, just boost up the roughness. I'm going to put it to 100%. Obviously this isn't like ideal. And if we click blend mode and we go add, as you can see, this is what I'm working with. So obviously you want to boost the roughness down and as you can see, it gets less and less like blurred out and you can find some really cool effects. So I'm going to go with a 6% or a 9 Now, this is something I learned after I made my filter, and um, if you use my filter, you'll realize that when you go up here, it has that like really ugly, harsh line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Texture and choose the Face Mesh Mask file, which was in the Reference Asset. So. so as you can see, when I go up here, it's more of a soft, hazy glow, and it generally looks more seamless. So here's a little bonus tip. If you want to add little objects here, like the hearts I had in my filter, you can go on a website called turbosquid.com and sort by the free section. You can also search them up, I believe. So I'm just going to search up bottle because I have a little idea in mind and I've already tried this out. So this is the bottle I'm going for. It is a 3D object. So I'm just going to download that by clicking download and I'm going to have to make an account, which I've already done. So the file you want to download for Spark AR is a .fbx file. I'm going to go into Spark AR, click the face tracker, right click on insert, and then go to 3D object. Now click the .fbx file that you've just downloaded and it should go right into your scene. So as you can see in our scene, it has imported the water bottle, but it is not looking the best. I don't like the shading on it and it is clearly massive. So when you're scaling stuff up and down, you want to choose the main file, like the big parent file. So in all of these, I'm going to go 0.03 because that's just the size that I want. I'm going to go here and I'm going to move this down and I'm going to put it just here. So there we go. I've adjusted the bottle to my liking. Now I need to change the materials because it's not looking like a plastic bottle. So as we can see inside the bottle, we have two materials and two assets, I guess you could say. And we have the glass and then we have the cap. Then I'm gonna open up this file for the asset. So I'm gonna change the shader type to physically based and I'm gonna turn this into a blue. Obviously you can change around with this, like it's pretty customizable. And now I'm gonna add a bit of a reflectivity and I will do so by just changing this and then getting this right. So now I'm gonna change the glass material and I'm also going to change it into a physically based material. 
Now here, as you can see, I'm just going to change it into a light, like a really faint light blue. So my goal for this filter and this tutorial was just to show you uh, what you can do with Spark AR. Obviously there's so much more and I wasn't really trying to create something nice, I was just trying to give a good showcase of my skills on Spark. So all the files for this project and all the stuff you need to download will be in the description. So I'm pretty sure we're all done for today. If you have any questions, make sure to give me a comment and I'll see you soon. So, see you guys!